Jaden Bogle. How uh, likely is he to be involved this weekend? Yeah, we'll just see. Like I said, we've um, he's got an issue with his knee, which you're gonna we're gonna manage between now and the end of the season. We're just trying to settle it down right now, but hopefully it's something that with some uh, management and managing him through through the training week and things, we can get him on the pitch. Yeah. Is that going to be a week-to-week -week kind of thing? Is there a potential that he may miss a considerable amount of time between now and the end of the season? Yeah, probably going to be week-to-week, game-to-game. Um, if it was going to be a long period of time, then we'd look to probably get something rectified. But we're just, just trying to get again whilst, uh, whilst we're managing it, get some opinion, get some... Uh, he's had a scan on it, so we know the problem. So we'll just manage it, like I said, get some opinion. And if it came to the point where... He was having to miss so much football anyway, then we'd probably look to intervene and get something done straight away. But we're confident that um, we'll get Jaden through to the end of the season and keep him involved. Because he's been such a, a huge player, hasn't he? Particularly over the, the last three or four weeks in, in terms of his performance level, reaching reaching new heights, really. Yeah, we've been really pleased with him. He's, he's done fantastic. Um, I think everyone knew what a good player he was. He had a spell in the Premier League last season where he did really, really well and... Um, this season, you say he's probably added that consistency. He's probably been as good defensively as he has going forward, and he's added a real good dynamic to, to how we play. Ben Osborne and Ender Stevens, what's the latest for those two? Hopefully, Ben uh, will get some sort of integration into the, the squad next week. Uh, but that he'll, he'll not be fit to play. But we'll get him hopefully start training some uh, sessions with us next week, and then. Assess him the week after. Enders, it's just really slow. Just the, the nature of the calf injury, where it is in between two muscles, it's just really slow. Um, we just we just led by how he reacts to every training session. Really, have you got any kind of time scales on Ender? Then is it a couple of weeks? Could it be a month? Could you know, be whatever. Anything? Just whenever it's ready. Just where where it is. Just how he responds to to the rehab, um, and we, we'll be led by that. I just wanted to ask about Jack O'Connell. We haven't had an update for a while. What, what's the latest with him? Still rehabbing, still going through the processes. Um, yeah, we know what a tough journey Jack's been on and he's got, like I say, everyone's support. But yeah, he, he's still on the on that road, on that journey where it's really, really tough. Um, and like I said, we'd never ever put a time scale on that. We just look to help him through. He gets the best, best, best support he can. Um, he spends time away from here as well for rehab, for his own well-being as well. So, yeah, we're uh, just on that long process. Is there a potential that he is looking towards next season and that you'd hope to have a pre-season with him? Or is that something that you just can't put a, a timescale on? Yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't put anything on it. It's just, again, it's how we led. He's been down so many, so many avenues and so many roads, you know, that that'd be foolish. So... I think it takes that pressure away from him as well and whilst we all know what a top player he is and how, how much um, we'd want him back and playing and everyone would want to see him at Bramall Lane, without a doubt, it's probably less important thinking about that at the minute. It's more important just getting Jack fit and well. But you're not expecting him back any, this season at all? No, not in my mind, no. no. If he is, fantastic, but no. We're just, uh, like I so said, we're in it for the long haul with him and make sure that he's okay. In terms of the last couple of games, Paul, how concerned are you by the fact that you've, you've not scored against Huddersfield in the week against Hull? No, not concerned because you look at everything to do with the game and it's a case of how we've have we not scored rather than we didn't look like scoring. Um, just bothered that you know, we didn't get the three points. That's it. If you look at the game the other night, we did everything but. And at any point, if any one of those chances goes in, the game's a totally different dynamic. So... We, listen, we're prepared for that. We know, we think a lot of games are going to be like that at Bramall Lane where teams come and sit in and try and slow it down and make it difficult. Um, but we actually performed in a way that we're happy with in terms of trying to maintain the tempo of the game, trying to play with an energy, create chances. And we did that. And barring the games where we've played against 10 men, it's been, in terms of the stats, it's been the, the highest expected XG that we've had, you know. So it's just one of those games. But... We want to be clinical enough to take them and uh, I'd have accepted one chance and winning 1-0 and taking three points.
Because clearly the, the quantity is there, and you alluded to this in the week. Is it the quality in terms of the chances? Is that the, the area that your players and, and as a team that you can improve on? Uh, no, I don't think it's quality of chance. I look at, all, again, the chances of the other day, they were fantastic chances. Um, I think if I, if I would like a better ratio, it'd be from the areas we get in. So the amount of ball we have, the amount of ball we have in opponents' final third, uh, probably creating even more chances. But that, uh, listen, I'm, I'm being really picky. I know I am, but yeah, we, we work hard on it. We work hard on being that team. Um, but likewise then, because we, we're making it evident how we want to be and what we want to do, teams are going to work twice as hard to to stop us creating those chances and have a different mentality when they come to Bramall Lane. But we, we have to get over that. We have to get past that. In terms of Ollie McBurney, it, it's eight goals in, in 85 appearances all told. I know that doesn't tell the, the whole story at all with, with his situation, but do you need to start seeing more end product from him? Yeah, well, and listen, I'm not bothered about the other games he's, he didn't play for me. Not at all. It's a totally different. So, as with all the players, it's like a fresh start. And uh, expect, ex expectancy, the, the things we ask from the players are, are different now. So what's gone before is gone. And uh, I know what all he can do. I know what type of lad he is. And I know how good he can be in this league. So we're just focusing on that. Improvement every day. A mentality to work hard every day. And we've already seen a big improvement in, in terms of that. And we've already seen that transfer onto the pitch. So... Um, again, we could have been saying something totally different. If one of his headers goes in, if that chance where he, he literally hits the keeper goes in, you, you're asking me different questions about Ollie. And but that's the fine margins, and we all accept that. It does though the fact that he hasn't scored in the league for for 14 months now? Do you think that's potentially affected him in these big moments when the chances come? Uh, on, listen, if I'm honest, it may be, but if I'm honest. I wouldn't because his, his approach and he's, he's a, I'm trying, I'm trying to say that I want him to be a different person and he's showing me that he, that he is working that way. So I'm judging him on the game and the game and a half he's played. So that's all I'm judging him on and it will be so it's from now going forward. So you've got no concerns in terms of Oli McBurney going forward that the goals will come with him? No, not if he applies himself like he, like he has been and Listen, and I'm not fobbing off this question in any way, shape or form. I'm trying to, without going into too much details, I'm trying to be really honest and say where I think he is and, and I'm happy where he is from where I thought he was. And uh, and I can just see improvement every day. I can see a, an improvement in everything about him every day. And if he continues doing that, you'll end up seeing the goals. Because may it get to the point where I know you're managing Billy Sharp and that's the reason you, you rested him in midweek, but where in terms of getting the results that he has to start week in, week out because he is the guy that, that's been scoring the goals. Yeah, Bill, I was similar. Back end of last season, I said this to Bill and the other forwards. Bill sort of earned his right to be my first pick last time as well with his work rate, his, his role for the team off the ball. And um, he's done the same again this year, you know, with the goals. He's, he's pushed his way into the team. Um, he understands his role for the team with and without the ball. And he's been leading the line great. So I think he's already at that position. But we need everyone else to be able to perform like that as well. And um, that's what I'm saying. And if we get people past the standards that Bill set, then we've improved the team. And then likewise, Bill will fight and fight to, to go past them again because that's the type of lad he is. So, yeah, it's all about that. It's all about raising the standards. It's incredibly tight, isn't it, in, in the race for those playoff places. How vital is it that you don't go a third game where, where you drop points? No, it's, it's too, we've got too many games to go to be worried about that. We're just worried about how we approach it. Like I said, we know it's going to be a tough game. Um, we've got many more games to go. We are on a good run. We know the form's been good and we'll trust that between now and the end of the season. So, I think I said before, with, with how we've started... Um, and the form we're in, if we maintain that to the end of the season, we'll be fine. But we know how hard we've had to work to maintain that. We know how hard the other teams are going to be fighting to stop us. So we're prepared for it. We're ready and we know it's going to be tough. What do you make of Swansea then, your next opponents? Yeah, they're a, a difficult team to, to play against because they, they, like to, they like to dominate the ball. Um, they, they like to frustrate by having possession and... Um, 
yeah, I can't see them playing any other way, really. You know, we've been, we're probably one of the, the two of the teams who have the most possession, so someone's going to have less than normal, you know, uh, and, and someone's going to have to be just as good without the ball as, as they are with it on Saturday. So we'll prepare for that. We know, we we'll sort of know what we're going to face. Um, they'll be saying the same thing. So, yeah, we'll approach it in the same way, respect them. We know what they're going to bring. We know how tough they are and they've got some good players, but we're at home and we want to play with the same sort of tempo and, and, and control the game and be as aggressive as we were the other night, but this time get the goals and get the three points. With the 16th right now, I mean, was it always going to take a little bit of time for, for Russell Martin to, to implement what he wants to do? Because he has got this very set way of doing things, as we saw at MK. Yeah, possibly. I don't know um, Russell well enough to say how, how we'll have gone about it from day one. Um, I've obviously seen most of the games over the last couple of months and um, it is a, a different approach. They want to be possession-based, I say. They want to build, build from the back and have a real clear sort of identity, if you like, and, and a brand of football. So if, I suppose if, if you're looking at it from that aspect and trying to be really unique, then it will be harder to, to implement and get all that across. But we all know it's about results. And um, this stage of the season, the, the league doesn't lie. So, like I said, we know what Swansea do well in terms of dominating the ball. We know how they look to create chances. And when they create chances, they're generally good ones. Um, but we want to create good ones against them. So we'll try and, as I said, impose ourselves on them. Are you preparing, though, potentially to have less of the ball this weekend? Because, like you said, the, the stats-wise, Sheffield United, it's been kind of 60, 65, 70% possession in games so far that you may have to change your approach a little bit if Swansea are going to keep more of the football. No, I don't think we'll change our approach. I just think we will have, we will probably have less because I, I don't think they'll come and play uh, any different to what they have done in all the other games this season. You know, some teams... Have come, especially in the in the last sort of couple of uh, couple of months. Some teams have come to Bramall Lane and not really been intent on having a ball and and trying to slow the game and like to deny us, which means we do have more of the ball. So um, I think in that respect, it'll be it'll be much more even. And you know, like I said, I'm not. We know how to still create chances by having less of the ball, and and we'd be comfortable with that as well. Some of our best chances may come from um, how we defend without the ball. So. Yeah, we, we'll accept both, but like I said, we'll just look to get the three points. So whether it's dominating the ball and creating chances through possession or winning the ball and attacking quick, um, we'll be prepared for either.